for today's game for Ryder. Well, they've got a little bit of a wrinkle in their lineup from their opening day lineup. Christian Ings will make his second consecutive start after Kamar Williams went down with an ankle injury. You mentioned Stevie Jordan. This is a lineup there with Tyre Marshall, a lot of size, Demencio Vaughn as well. Adam, this team can rebound for sure. And the interesting thing about Christian Ings, Jay, he didn't attempt a shot in the first game that he played, and he's been in double, double figures since, so... He'll get the call. The freshman from Philadelphia in the starting lineup for the Bronx tonight. Well, the good news for the Minutemen as we take a look at their starting lineup, they've got the same lineup now for all five games. Freshman Sean East, the reigning rookie of the week in the A-10. Clergeau, Diallo, Pierre, and Mitchell, as you mentioned in the open, dealing with some injury. Still no side. Chapman out for personal reasons. Now you lose John Bugs as well due to a knee injury on Saturday. Both these teams today really playing with nine, ten guys able to go in this and there's a lot heaped on the shoulders of Sean East, of course. He certainly responded to the challenge of the freshman being a point guard, 14 points a game, but he's averaging almost 30 minutes a game as well, Jay. So he's going to have to keep himself out of foul trouble. And I have a feeling that the minutes per game average is going to be going up for him over the next few weeks. Now the Minutemen led by Matt McCall in his third season, 28 and 41 overall. Ryder led by St. Joe's alumnus and Kevin Baggett in his eighth season at the helm as two-time Mac coach of the year 2015 and 18 that is the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference for Ryder coming up from Lawrenceville New Jersey our officials today Les Jones Jerry Heater James Breeding a very experienced crew to say the least Minutemen will come out of their white uniforms today Ryder and the ironically maroon as Marshall greets Mitchell at center stage and we are underway here from Amherst, Massachusetts. And tip is up. It's secured by Diallo. And here we go. Minutemen 77.5 points per game. A tick up from where they were a year ago. Coming off that victory. A dominating win against Central Connecticut State here on Saturday. And this Ryder team will push the pace throughout the game. They like to play a frenetic pace. Minutemen have shown the ability to do that as well. Here's East. Eight on the shot clock. Gets it back, three to shoot. East takes a desperation three, and he airballed it. Not the start you want to have if you're UMass. Was a little surprised. East didn't take that floater in the lane. It looked like he had an alley to do it, but opted to pass in a good defensive possession for Ryder. Now, Jay, let's see how the Bronx handle this UMass pressure. Ryder turned the ball over 29 times on Sunday against Arizona State. They're averaging more than 20 turnovers a game. In fact, one of the... The worst teams in the country in terms of turning the basketball over. Here they break it. Ings into Mitchell. Left it short. And there's the offensive rebound for Ryder. They're plus 12 in that category. And the Minutemen have been re out-rebounded in three of the four games they've played so far this season. Certainly one of the subplots here today. Seven on the shot clock. Here's Vaughn right into Claire Joe, who takes the charge. He does that so well. And Demencio Vaughn will be dinged for the foul. Keon Claire Joe not afraid to give up the body and did a great job getting a legal guarding position as we take another look. And Keon Claire Joe came out right here, got outside of that arc and was able to take the contact and force the turnover. He's so tough in the lane, Claire Joe. Not and for not a very big guy no, either. He's only not. 6'1. 185. Claire Joe over to East. With the second possession for the Minutemen will be better than the first. Vaughn smothering Pierre, trying to get it into Mitchell. Not there. Eight on the shot clock for the Minutemen. Not been able to move the basketball. East takes another three. That one, no. And Marshall with a rebound for Ryder. Two looks that you don't really want to have coming out of the gates there. And we'll see if Ryder can take advantage. They get it into Marshall. Marshall swiped at by Claire Joe. In the corner, open Vaughn for three. And he airballs it. This is a Ryder team that wasn't here this afternoon for shoot-around. They have been in transit during this Air Force Reserve tip-off tournament. From Arizona back to New Jersey and just arrived here late this evening. Diallo with the take, draws the contact, will head to the line. And that is on Vaughn, which would be his second, which is not insignificant. 
Good take by Samba Diallo here as he just went after the bigger Vaughn, went strong to the basket and drew the contact. How about Samba Diallo this season coming off a career-high 13 points on Saturday? Did it at the free throw line. Six for seven in that game. Here he misses the first one. Samba Diallo just looks stronger. He looks more confident. Certainly his freshman year, he played with a lot of effort. But now you can see that, you know, he feels much more comfortable about what's going on around him, attacking the basket and getting himself to the foul in this case. But unfortunately misses those two. He'd been 10 for 12 from the foul line coming into this game. Now we're still without a point. Vaughn out and Willie Nunez Jr. in for Ryder. And he'll take a three from the corner. That's no good. And Claire Joe with a rebound. Two plus minutes into this one without a point so far. Mitchell gets it back from East. Now East is going to drive, hop step through the lane and has it knocked away. It'll be Ryder basketball, a rare turnover from Sean East. The Minutemen brought Mitchell out that time from the post out top to try to free up things outside or inside, I should say, as the Bronx will keep the basketball and Minutemen unfortunately turned the ball over. Yeah, East, six and a half assists per game, over five assists per turnover ratio, one of the best in the country. And off to a sluggish start here for both teams tonight. The rider hasn't really gotten the ball in Stevie Jordan's hands. They go on to the interior here. Double team comes on Marshall. Marshall, right hand hook, it goes. Nice move for Marshall, the senior from Philadelphia. He had a good size advantage over Samba Diallo and is able to back him in for the short, good basket. And the Bronx strike first. And Mitchell hoists up a three. That's good. Contested at that by Marshall and UMass on top. Well, the big man's a 37% three-point shooter, and he has a lot of confidence out there. And that's one way when they're taking away the inside pop him out and let him shoot threes open for three from the corner and that one is a response for Nunez Ali Nunez averaging almost seven a game and this rider team they don't take a lot of threes and they try to bully you on the interior they're a 30 yep. percent three-point shooting team when they do there's Pierre on the drive pull up for Pierre baseline is good Pierre coming off a nine-point performance on Saturday. And a tremendous second half against Northeastern. Almost four minutes in. Marshall smothered by Mitchell, and he gets it back. Another offensive board. Left it short here. Yeoman's work for Kyer Marshall. Comes up with nothing. Here comes UMass. Down low to Mitchell. Mitchell, a move, and lays it in. And good anticipation by Mitchell, knowing the defender was coming not to go up too hard. He took his time, let the defender fly by, and scored. He has UMass's last five points. Yeah, really presence of mind there from Mitchell. You thought he's just going to slam that home. It would have been contested for sure. There's Scott on the push-off. Frederick Scott draws the foul, or excuse me, delivers the foul. The third foul of the game for Ryder. UMass has yet to be NBA on Sunday. If they win, uh, the Minutemen will play the championship game at 1 o'clock on Sunday. And then if they lose, they'll play in the Naismith Consolation game at 3.30. But nevertheless, Adam, you love the fact that you know, all these teams are kind of descending upon Mohegan's son, and that's a lot of basketball talent there. It certainly is, Jay. So you look at the Springfield bracket where Ryder is playing, and of course, you see Vermont. They played Virginia last night and gave uh, the Cavaliers quite the scare, a, a very close game uh, from UVM. So a great couple of days of basketball done at Mohegan's son. Last year, the Minutemen were out in Las Vegas for their in-season tournament. Jumper for Mitchell, and a little shooter's touch there. He's got seven of the nine for the Minutemen. Here comes the press for UMass. And Jordan gets it across. Open Nunez in the corner for three. That's off the front of the rim. Another offensive board bullied up by Scott. He can't finish. Marshall in traffic draws the whistle. Take your pick. Who are you going to give it to? It's going to be Trey Mitchell, which will be his first. And on Saturday, Mitchell really didn't get a lot of run. He played just 17 minutes due to early foul trouble. Due to early foul trouble and the fact, quite frankly, the Minutemen were so far ahead, they didn't really need him. As we take a look at this sequence, and the Minutemen there failed a couple of times to get bodies on rock players and several offensive rebounds for Ryder. Let's leads to this foul shot. 
And Marshall gets the bounce, his third point today. Six for 12 now from the free throw line as the men will bring on T.J. Weeks off the bench. He's really become the sixth man for the Minutemen this season. The freshman from Warwick, Rhode Island, averaging 13.3 points a game. He hasn't started a game yet this season. I think they kind of like him, that weapon off the bench. Minutemen on a 6-1 to one run. Mitchell with the rebound for UMass. So one out of two for Marshall. So far, we've seen a couple of rush shots for the Minutemen in the hands of Sean East, something we're not accustomed to so far this season. Now East navigating. Almost miscommunication there with Mitchell. There's Diallo on Scott. And they'll call him for steps. Couldn't quite stop his momentum there, but you'd like the move from Samba Diallo. Nimble. Good quick move there from the left side, but unfortunately for the Minutemen, it turns into the second turnover of the game. UMass being out-rebounded here. Four offensive rebounds nope. already allowed by the Minutemen. Mm -hmm. Something that's been an issue for UMass this season on the negative side of rebounding. Nice pass down low and an easy lay-in for Marshall. The 6'9", Marshall able to get behind the younger Trey Mitchell for the Minutemen. Good hands here. Take in that pass and lay it home. So six minutes into this one, Minutemen up by one. It's mostly to the work of Trey Mitchell, who's got seven points now. Weeks, guarded by Jordan, takes it in the lane, and the left-hand floater is good through traffic. Seen that a couple of times already this year. Things fun to watch. And Ryder gets it up. Scott in the open, and he gets blocked by Mitchell, saved by Mitchell as well. UMass the other way. Pierre trying to get involved. Open man in the corner. Catch and shoot three. Indeed, T.J. Weeks. Now the lefty was wide open in that corner, Jay, and Mitchell could have taken the three himself. He made the extra pass, and Weeks drained it. Bombs away for Weeks. Eighth three-point make this season, and the Minutemen have their largest lead today. Up 14 to eight. Ings on the drive past East, and a nice scoop and score for Christian Ings, his first bucket today. East, nice touch. Just enough on the floater for Sean East. That have been doing a nice job, Jay, creating offense off the drive. A couple of times here in the early going. He's just got so many different paces that he can give you. Ames with a nice dunk attempt, but he gets denied by the rim. Try to really throw it down. In transition, Weeks for three. Indeed. Three Jay Weeks makes it a nine-point lead for the Minutemen. That can happen in a hurry for UMass. In transition, here's Frederick Scott on the response. Long rebound, pulled down by Ings. Another opportunity here for the Bronx. And Scott just lost it. He's tried to go to the basket a couple times, putting the ball on the floor. And both times, it's resulted in a, an unsuccessful ending for him. A 10-2 run for the Miniman in weeks. A little too eager that time. They're called for the steps. And that'll take us to our under 12 minute media timeout. Well, Minutemen have already played one team out of the MAC, and Adam, that was a tough contest on the road down in Fairfield with a 62 60 win this season. That was a game where UMass had to defend the final possession essentially with Fairfield having the ball and a shot to tire go ahead. The Minutemen able to force a three pointer that missed and got out of the bridge for the two point victory. Of course, the MAC, you know, it comes down to their conference schedule and their conference tournament as we have a steal by the Minutemen. Weeks, instant offense off the bench. Now gives it out to Pierre. Pierre attacks the rim and Adi got mauled. No contact. Here comes Ryder the other way and I'll slow it down here. And Alan Powell, the backup point guard off the bench. As I was going to say, the Mac it really comes down to their conference schedule and certainly their, their league schedule as well, their tournament to see who's going to get that NCAA bid. So the non-conference a good warm-up, but ultimately it's what happens after January 1st that counts. Yeah, without a doubt. Another offensive rebound for Ryder. Something to keep an eye on, not only today, but throughout for the Minutemen. Jerry Baptiste off the bench, getting his first touch. Weeks in the corner for three. Wow. He gets rid of the ball so quick, that lefty 
release in the right corner. That's his sweet spot. The Minutemen now are four out of five from three-point range. <laughs> Weeks up to double figures already. And the Minutemen growing this lead to 12. Should say four out of six from three-point range. She passed nine out of 12 from the field already. And here's another turnover by the Bronx. This has been an issue for the Bronx. I mentioned it. Just one of the most prone to turnover teams in the country. And this is, you know, Weeks wasn't even wide open. You say there's a good closeout from Jordan, but didn't get into the face of Weeks quick enough. He gets rid of it. Like I said, that release is just so quick, so lethal when he spots up from three. Three for three for Weeks today from long range into Baptiste. Baptiste through traffic, missed it. And Scott there for the rebound. Baptiste, the other big for UMass in the lineup by giving Trey Mitchell a rest. A nice hard take for uh, Jerry Ojimuno Johnson on the interior. 13 to 5 run now for the Minutemen. Jerry Baptiste has given UMass good minutes off the bench and small increments, four and five minutes here and there. He's good for rebounds, good for altering shots down on the defensive end, and has done a nice job giving Mitchell a blow. And there's another three by week. Wow. Heat check, TJ Weeks, four for four from long distance. And it's 25 to 12, UMass. Swarming on the defensive end. Ryder able to get it out. That UMass press, Jay, is disrupting Ryder's half-court offense. You know, they have to rush to break the press, and then it's throwing their timing off when they do. To the post, Scott. Johnson will take it, and it's tracked down by Weeks. Well, I guess at this point you'll let Weeks take another one until he proves he can't hit. They haven't even needed really Carl Pierre. He'll try to match it. Pierre for three, indeed. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I stand corrected. They're rising to their feet here inside the Mullen. Shooting team, 50%, just about 40% of the three-point range. But the rate that they've been making these three-pointers over the first five games this season has been just stunning. How about this? It's a 19-4 run in a five-minute span for UMass. Now, you worry a little bit, I think, if you're the Minutemen, for relying on the three-point shot, as they've had to do at times this season. They went 10 for 22 from three-point range. But they're taking, I think, what would be deemed a healthy amount of three-point shots, averaging about well, 23. In today's game, that I think would be considered as healthy. Yeah. So Ryder needs to figure something out here. They're one for seven from long distance. And that's with their largest lead at 16. Powell for three from the right side, and he answers. Quell the uprising for the Minutemen. Allen Powell on the board. He doesn't score very much for the Bronx. Average just a point a game in 17 minutes. A freshman from Philadelphia. Well, how about this? He's now 1 for 13 from long distance this season. He had been 0 for 12 previous. So good for Powell to get off the schneid. Here's Santos. Santos spinning and drawing some contact, but it will be negated. We saw a spin play similar for Santos in that Central Connecticut State game. Great vision by East to see that lane and see Santos wide open on the baseline, but the travel call was made. Is is that 100%? Is that, that's good, right? I, Can't get any better than that, partner. Points off the bench, instant offense. That's when this game really turned around. It was sluggish in the first few minutes. Powell. He's off the mark. Six minutes he's done that in, by the way. Another offensive board and an offensive foul called on Jerry Ojimuno Johnson. The third offensive foul today for Ryder. We get another look at it, and Ryder kicks it out here, and the Minutemen do a great job of this. This time it was Weeks. Who else? Taking the charge. The Minutemen have taken a few of those tonight already, and Ryder, instead of jump-stopping, just deciding to plow through, and it hasn't worked for them so far tonight. No, absolutely, and here's Baptiste taking a seat. You mentioned the fouls there. This is something that's been different for the Minutemen this season as well. They've been very good at avoiding foul trouble into Mitchell. He's been drawing double teams throughout the season. Moderate success. In terms of being able to break those double teams. Now he takes it on the lane, off the window. It's good. Hey, let's stop this three-point thing, Mitchell says. Haven't seen him take anybody off the drive very often this no. season, but he did a nice job there. 
And now Vaughn left it short on the finger roll. Another offensive board, and Marshall lays it in. He's got seven. Minutemen are so aggressive defensively it's, sometimes, Jay. I think they struggle to box out just because they're they're challenging the shot so hard. That's sort of some of the drawback to the way they played defensively, but eight offensive rebounds thus far for Ryder. Weeks almost lost it. Diallo feeling a three. Well, that's not really his game, but we've seen him hit a couple of those this season. Attempted just six this season. Saved by Jordan, zips it to Marshall. Marshall right into Weeks, goes up strong and gets another bucket. Also that good experience for the young Trey Mitchell taking on a 6'9", 245-pound senior down there. And Marshall get the best of them in that sequence. Yeah, talking with head coach Matt McCall, clearly worried about the size. Here's Claire Joe for three. That's no good. Long rebound, Claire Joe gets it. Into the lane, spins it up, and a whistle. Which way will it go? Marshall and Claire Joe still down. I didn't get an indication, did you? I believe it's going to stay with the Minutemen. All right, so Marshall will get a hand up. Claire Joe appears to be all right on that collision. Timeout on the floor, 6.51 to go. It's Claire Joe, my bad. All right, Claire Joe called for the charge, UMass. Up there, that was a, a very good call. and. Marshall certainly took the brunt of that. And it looks like he'll be taking a bit of a rest here after he banged his head on the floor. Now it felt like UMass is really going to pull away in this thing. Keep in mind, Ryder in their earlier win this season against Coppin State, they were down 15 in that first half and made their way back for the victory 91-84. to So this is a team that has some pluckiness in them and a lot of leadership being such a veteran team returning yep. four starters you know this isn't going to phase them one bit it almost feels a little bit like the makeup of the umass lowell team that we saw to begin the season nifty move for powell can't connect gets his own miss nine offensive rebounds and counting for Ryder. nunez chucks up a three and we've got a whistle down low it'll be on Ryder. Well, Ryder's been settling for a lot of shots, Jay, especially off the offensive rebounds. Not kicking out, not running the offense, but just firing it up. And as you can see, they've gathered already nine offensive rebounds in yeah. the first 13 minutes and change. And that's something UMass has got to work on. Luckily for the Minutemen, they've drained so many three-pointers. Six here already out of ten taken. But Ryder's still in this thing. Don't let this early deficit fool you. They called that foul on Ojimuno Johnson, so it's his second. Minutemen scoreless. The last two minutes. Ryder switches to his zone yep. here, Jay. Pierre will try to shoot out of it. And he's got his second triple today. They were slow to shift in that zone, and Pierre left wide open. And the native of Boston has drained a couple of those today for eight points. Total. Pierre averaging just about 11 points per game this season. Mitchell contested. Marshall gets another rebound and a whistle. On the putback here for Marshall. Be on TJ Weeks, which will be his first foul, third team foul for UMass. You can see UMass going against his zone, and they left Pierre wide open, the top of that zone, and Carl Pierre gets his feet set like that. He's going to make those more than he doesn't. Between Pierre, Weeks, and Mitchell, I mean, the theme is going to be for those guys. All can step out and shoot the three as Marshall hits his first free throw. He's got 10. So far in this one. Average just over 10 points a game last season. Top 25 in the MAC. Obviously, tremendous size as well for the senior. Hits them both. And Ryder, traditionally a good rebounding team, going back to those offensive boards they've gathered in. They're plus 12 in their games this season in rebounding march. We're seeing that here today for sure. Five and a half to go here in the first half. UMass has controlled for the most part. Pierre steps into a three, indeed. Well, they tried to push him off the three-point line, and now Carl Pierre makes another three. And UMass just absolutely killing it from outside now. They are seven out of 11 from deep. A 24-footer for Carl Pierre. I keep saying after every game, you're not sure if you can count on this type of three-point shooting, but that's been the norm, over 40%. 
entering today for the Minutemen from long range. Up 36-21. Marshall goes to work on Mitchell and a nice floater on the hook, I should say. Strong dribble there and a pretty looking hook shot in the lane by Marshall. And he's been a handful for the Minutemen offensively. Marshall into double figures. And Mitchell will try to go down into the post on Marshall. East thought about it. And that's his sweet spot right there. Missed it. Somehow got it back. And almost a pseudo lob to Diallo who will draw the contact and head to the free throw line. And a good decision by East to pass up that three. Drive to the lane and missed the floater, but decided to go for the high percentage shot as we take another look. It's almost flabbergasted as East got that wide open look. And Diallo misses on the first free throw. A good job by the Minutemen here to gather a couple of offensive rebounds and get Samba Diallo to the foul line. Minutemen have not made a foul shot tonight, Jay. They're 0 for 3. Coming into this game, they were about 63%, but they've been better the last couple of games from the charity stripe after a tough showing at UMass Lowell to start the season. Diallo has the first free throw make today. Yeah, I think there's definitely some things when you're looking at how the season is in Folded already for the Minutemen that you'd really like to improve. Blocked by Baptiste. Another return here for Ryder. Now on the breakout, Pierre. One on two. Pierre looking for some contact. Nowhere to go. Trying to create some space. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Christian Ings. But good patience there by Pierre. Not the force of shot in that situation. And able to draw the out of bounds call and reshuffle the deck. You can see Carl here tried to draw the contact from Ings. Good defense and almost going to call an offensive yeah, foul. Yeah, I would agree with you there. there. It looked like it was a little too aggressive. Here he is from the corner for three around and out. And Marshall has been a force with the defensive rebound for Ryder. Jordan has been really insignificant today for the Bronx. Not been able to get him worked into the offense. Frederick Scott for three. And Santos flies in for the rebound here for UMass. Zip down low to Diallo. Just misses out on an and one opportunity. Well, how about the vision for Sean East to send Diallo back to the free throw line. Minutemen up 37-23, controlling here in the last 10 minutes with 3.38. So far, they've been great against the Mac, as you can see there. Last loss was against Quinnipiac. And the Minutemen have controlled this series, albeit that doesn't mean that a rider and some of the other teams out of the Mac are not up to the challenge to face Atlantic 10 teams. That's the last meeting between these two. You referenced Steven, Stevie Jordan in that contest as a young man, 15 points. Dante Clark, but of 27. December 22nd, 2016. Of course, the Minutemen typically play you know, a couple of Mac teams yeah. every year just because of the situation with geography and the Quinnipiac loss in 2016 that was on the road that was down in Hamden Connecticut early in uh, Matt McCall's tenure here at the at UMass I knew you would remember that like it was yesterday my friend well I was there <laughs> and the free throw issues continue here for the Minutemen a foul going into break was on Frederick Scott his second so Ryder dealing with some Multiple players with two fouls, 17 fouls for the Bronx, just three. I stress that number three for UMass. Now here's Stevie Jordan. Gets a little look high off the window, and the loose ball taken away by Pierre. Outlet to Diallo. Diallo with the slam. Throws it down with the left hand. Great effort by Pierre to reel in that rebound, and that left Samba Diallo wide open. So explosive, and for three, Alan Powell has his second triple today. Ryder attacked the press that time against UMass, sped right down the court and able to get the three-pointer. Diallo is thinking about another one. Now Ings the other way off the glass, and 5 nothing stretch after that dunk for Diallo. Timeout called by UMass, and I think rightfully so. Take a look at this last sequence. Here's Pierre battling for that rebound, able to come up with it. Samba Diallo already uh, taken off for the basket and jammed it home. But Ryder, their last two possessions, Jay, they've really attacked this UMass team with a 12-point lead here. Particularly with a young club, too, Jay. You know, you see something that you don't like as a coach, you know, best to address it right away. Let them work on it. And 
Yeah, Coach McCall did that right there despite the 12 point lead. He's Coach McCall, he's got a new set of suits this year, he says. He got this guy he was famous tailors for the, them up pretty well. Yeah. He was famous for the maroon pants in yeah. previous seasons. Those haven't come out yet. They will come back, I think, maybe the Harvard game. That'll be a road game, huh? too. Tend to shoot here for UMass. Weeks on the screen. Yahtzee. Fifth three-point make today for T.J. Weeks. That time they set the screen for him. He gets lost in the corner. And that young man playing with a great deal of confidence right now. Shades that first game against UMass Lowell where he had 20-plus points off the bench. Five for five. Wow. Six for six overall for Weeks. And Ryder just doesn't know what to do. Marshall on Mitchell, gets his own miss, puts it up, and will head to the free throw line for a shot at three. He's got 15. Look at this. I was used to seeing this play run for Carl Pierre. And it's the same action, just with a different guy. And that's the beauty of having Weeks, East, and Pierre, all guys that are threats from beyond the arc. It makes it difficult to guard, and that time they run the play for Weeks, and he hits another. Miniman, though, Jay, they got to figure out a way to get a body on Marshall. He keeps getting these putback opportunities and it's causing some difficulty, and that sent uh, Trey Mitchell to the bench. Yeah, second foul on Mitchell, 12 offensive rebounds. Pierre trying to keep up with Weeks, launches a three. Diallo with the offensive board, and they'll work it out with 20 on the shot clock. Yeah, you got to figure out a way to be able to get some muscle down low, and I think that's where you miss a guy like Cy Chapman. Particularly if the three stop going down. Pierre, a little fade away. Oh, so pretty for Carl Pierre. But each time the Minutemen have gone on one of these runs, Ryder's been able to come back and you know, creep closer in this game. Jordan to the rack for the bucket. That's his first basket today. Ryder has 20 of their 32 points in the paint at this point of the game. And a lot of those on second chance opportunities. Final minute here in the first half. Diallo looks down to Baptiste and oh, can't do that. Uh, he had to put the he was anticipating the contact and had to put the shot up. Miniman getting six assists so far today from Sean East. Three for Pierre. Eighteen on the shot clock here for Ryder. Nice move for Ings and can't quite finish. Diallo there for the rebound. Shot clock off here for UMass. East is saying, oh, this is when I thrive. The final seconds of a half. A bit of a nasty move for East. Around and out. Tapped away. And here comes Ryder with a last-ditch effort. Ings in the open court. Gets the bucket. And will head to the free-throw line with 6.1 on the clock. East put him on the string but couldn't connect on the three-point shot and the outlet to Christian Ings goes in. And UMass did not play that according to plan for head coach Matt McCall. Trying to take the last shot, left plenty of time. They'll still have an opportunity here. 6.1, you would think. Ings four for seven from the free throw line. And this season... Tracked down by Baptiste, three on the shot. And Diallo just has to take the heave and can't quite replicate what East did here last week against Northeastern. We've got Adam Friend here, 45 to 34. Want to win courtside seats to an upcoming UMass basketball game. Text Bement to 90561. A co-educational day in boarding school for students in K through 9 in Deerfield. Visit Bement's website at www.bement.org for more information. Hey, this ship is taking off. UMass basketball is hot, and you have uh, less than 24 hours to get your $10 tickets, the Black Friday flash sale. Those are tickets for any future game here at home. 
just ten dollars but you got to purchase them before seven o'clock tomorrow so you still got a little bit of time but not much and jay you and i'll be spending black friday in piscataway new jersey Ooh, baby. In the minute, man, as they take on the big tens rutgers well the radio call of that and we're gonna go down on thanksgiving eve you know i wouldn't rather thanksgiving spend night, you mean. night that's true i wouldn't rather spend thanksgiving with anybody else but you, my friend. And you're letting me drive, so you're really oh, trusting yeah, to get yeah. you well, there I gotta, safely on I gotta Thanksgiving. i download my next net Netflix shows and you know, get everything in the queue, and I'll let you do all the work down the turnpike. I want to check your life insurance policy, too. <laughs> Here we go. F number two, Ryder with the basketball backdoor cut and an easy lay-in for Stevie Jordan, his second bucket today. And he's been quiet, but that pulls it to within single digits for the Bronx. Tell Matt McCall not happy with the defensive effort there. There's Diallo trying to square up his man Scott. Going underneath and draws the contact. Gets the bucket and heads to the line. A patient athletic move there by Samba Diallo. Waiting out his man and then going after him and drawing that contact. That's something Samba Diallo just would have been able to do last year. But he's stronger, he's more confident. And right here he's able to draw that contact. Yeah, you're right. Confident, I think, is the word there for Diallo. That is the third foul on Frederick Scott, the redshirt junior, the DePaul transfer. He averages almost 26 minutes a game and 14 points, so that's tough for the Bronx, but the Minutemen leaving more points at the foul line now, two for seven. Got to hit the free throws. And the Minutemen struggling there. Diallo getting to the line, however, yet again. Marshall going to work, and Marshall with the turnaround, not there. A couple of bodies hit the floor, and Diallo's going to help Claire Joe up as he has the basketball. Gets a nice round of applause <laughs> from the fans here inside the Mullen Center. Well, Jay, I guess message received from Coach McCall to his players about needing to be more physical rebounding. One minute gone by here in the second half. Minutemen trying to figure out a way to score in the paint. Only 10 points in the paint. In that first half, four on the shot clock. East navigating. Nothing there, one to shoot, and they won't get it off. Second shot clock violation today for the Minutemen. Ings and Marshall came right out and double teamed the UMass point guard that time and backed them away, and nowhere he could go. Good defensive sequence there for the Ryder Bronx. Minutemen going to a straight man-to-man -man press here, Jay. A little bit more passive than we're used to seeing. Ings has done a pretty good job on a fill-in point guard role. For Kamar Williams, who's out with an ankle injury for the second consecutive game. Just six turnovers yep. for Ryder. They average more than 20 a game. Six to shoot here for the Bronx. Into Marshall again. He's been busy backing down Mitchell, and he draws the foul. And Mitchell's saying, hey, my hands were straight up, but he gets dinged for his third foul today. Trey struggling against the bigger and older Marshall as we take a look at that. And Trey Mitchell, I think, a little bit of a learning curve here tonight, Jay, as he's uh, facing a, a more experienced opponent down low. I don't know that the Minutemen have seen the likes of Marshall so far in the five games they've played this season. No, I think you're absolutely right. And... You know, you're going to need to get accustomed to playing guys like Marshall because most A-10 teams yep. have a guy of his size and stature. Coach McCall going to leave Trey Mitchell out there with the three fouls. Showing how much he trusts that young man. Marshall one out of two from the free throw line, leading the way for the Bronx. He got 16 points so far, the senior from Philadelphia. Ten-point game. And now we see Baptiste get up off the bench for the next defensive possession. And Mitchell trying to post up Marshall, and he's going to draw his fourth foul. That's running against a more experienced and older opponent there, able to draw that foul. And Trey Mitchell's just frustrated here this evening. As he'll head to the bench with two minutes and one second gone by here in the second half. And now Jerry Baptiste going to have to play some big-time minutes for the Minutemen in that center position. Yeah, without a doubt, and we saw Baptiste do something similar against Northeastern. Big minutes off the bench and on the drive. We got another foul on UMass. Just three fouls on the Minutemen in that first half. 
And already three fouls here in half number two, just over two minutes in. Still a ten-point game, but this will be a good test yep. for the minute men. Learning to play with foul trouble, learning how to sort out your rotation, and learning how to go against an opponent that just isn't backing away. And they call that on Claire Joe. Should be his second. Ryder now five for nine from the foul line after that first one goes. And Claire Joe head of the bench and Weeks comes off the bench to spell him. Of course, Weeks had those five three-pointers in the first half. But you always get concerned, Jay. You know, when are those threes going to stop falling? Yeah. I mean, you have to shoot till you, you know, they stop going in. But you don't want to overstay your welcome at the three-point line either. Yeah, I think you got to figure out a way to score on the interior. It hasn't been an issue because you've been able to connect from three-point range over 40 percent this season but baptiste isn't quite the offensive threat that mitchell is no, without mitchell without bugs without chapman here's diallo down to baptiste and he can score from there way to prove me wrong jerry great move going <laughs> up hands. and under there nice little up fake. something he's been working on throughout the offseason marshall got loose behind right. baptiste and i are marshall approaching that would be his career high of 25. He's already got 18. Or still got 17 plus to go. The lead is eight. Baptiste trying to back down Marshall. But he can't close it out. Ryder continues to chip away here. You know, the veteran team, four starters coming back, and they've done a nice job sticking around and to this point at least weathering the UMass storm. Baptiste able to deny Marshall that time. With Ten on the shot clock. Using that long reach to his advantage. Now an adjustment for Marshall. He's giving up a couple of inches to Baptiste. And you can see the effect of that right there as Baptiste able to reach around and deny that pass with that big wingspan of his. Baptiste has been such a factor defensively for the Minutemen. Four to shoot. Jordan over Weeks. And oh, knocked around. Finally taken down by Weeks. Almost gave it back up. Here's Pierre. Stutter step through the lane, and he draws the whistle before he can get the shot off. Foul will be on Marshall. That's going to be his first, believe it or not, in all the banging down low he's done today. Again, it goes back to experience. Jay knows how to keep himself out of foul trouble. That'll be something Trey Mitchell will learn as he progresses here in Amherst. Looks like Ryder has switched back to that zone. Of course, Pierre hit a couple of, against this zone, against this look in the first half. Ten on the shot clock. Weiss try, he's trying to break it down. Diallo at the rim. Gets mauled from behind. Two to shoot as it didn't hit the basket. And it'll be Ryder basketball. Tough break there for the Minutemen. Diallo a good take, but... Couldn't draw any iron and then couldn't handle the carom afterwards. I think you're all right with Samba Diallo. We've talked about his aggressiveness, you know, double-digit points in three of the first four games. You like the fact that you add that slashing element to the offense for the Minutemen. And that frees up things outside for other guys, too, and you're able to take it to the hole so effectively. Meanwhile, Ryder trying to chip away what once was a 17-point deficit. Now to within eight. Here's Vaughn. Over Baptiste. I think it's six points the difference as Denencio Vaughn gets his first basket today. Ryder now, Jay, 28 points of, in the paint out of the 43 they have tonight. Diallo on Scott and flings it up, falls to the court, and the rebound for Marshall. On a high percentage shot for Samba Diallo. And Ings will lose it. Minutemen will catch a break there as they turn over Ryder, and that'll bring us to our first media timeout here in the second half. Well, the Minutemen, seeing their seventh, has done a great job getting this young team ready coming out of the gate, and certainly uh, the evidence there and the, the Ken Palm rating, certainly one of the important metrics in college basketball, and both teams have grown in that regard this, uh, coming into this season. I, I feel absolutely bereft here that I don't get your Dick Vitale impression. Dickie V taking notice of the Minutemen. I'm going to see if they can... A long way to go here. Only up by six. 
to continue that trend in the Ken Palm and RPI. There's the spinning floater in the lane for Sean East. Haven't seen that today till now. He's got four. Good patience by the Minutemen in that set. Jay able to take a, a higher percentage shot as Ryder really challenging the Minutemen along the perimeter. First bucket in over two minutes for UMass. To the post, draws the triple team out for Ings for three. And a whistle will go against Ryder. That's going to be on Fawn, I believe his third. Take another look at that basket. Good ball movement by Diallo and East. A pretty spin move. He had something similar to that against Central Connecticut. Well, East will take a breather here along with Diallo, Claire Joe, and Preston Santos. On for the Minutemen. Six points so far in this second half for UMass. Clergeau trying to penetrate. Draws the contact, fights it up. Doesn't get the call, nor the roll. Here comes Ryder the other way. Jordan. And now Vaughn has it denied by Baptiste, but a whistle. As Demencio Vaughn attacked the rim. The foul's going to be before the block by Baptiste as we see the drive here by Vaughn. They call Santos in the body foul that time. Unfortunate break for the Minutemen with Baptiste flying over to pin that against the glass. And the first foul on Santos. Demencio Vaughn, 14 points a game, has been relatively quiet here today. And just three points thus far. See what the offense looks like here without Sean East. We mentioned no John Bugs, no Colton Mitchell. Weeks drives, can't connect. Baptiste gets it and throws it down with the force of a thousand waterfalls. Big time dunk for Baptiste. Well, here it is. The floater just won't go, but nobody around Jerry Baptiste. He saw three Ryder players just standing around, and the big man from Haiti slams it home with authority. And that is on Frederick Scott, the foul, his fourth. Number two, Alan Powell, into the game. And I think that's something that Baptiste has been itching to do throw one down and get a little muscle on the interior, grabbing the offensive board. And it's, these minutes are huge by Baptiste with Mitchell in foul trouble with four on the bench. He's going to need to be out there a while, and he came into the game, you know, averaging just a couple of points a game, but anything you can get out of him, you know, that's really a huge bonus. That was really a huge slam dunk that time, and there's a turnover. And now you're starting to see the Minutemen defense uh, cause some kerfuffle here for Ryder. Turned over 29 times, as Adam mentioned, against Arizona State. And the Minutemen will try to pull at that thread to unravel the Ryder Bronx here in the latter portion of half number two. And Ryder not quite as deep as they normally are tonight with a couple of injuries, so let's see if that UMass press does start to wear them down. Zone look from the Bronx. Santos will take a three. That's short. And Ryder's Willie Nunez Jr. with a rebound. The Riders not a fill it up from long distance three point team, but they certainly got a couple of guys that can shoot it. And Powell's already got two today. Make it three. Powell gets open, a timeout called. He's got nine. He had been 0 for 12 from long range. Was made this summer of what this UMass roster would look like. Seven freshmen and all. And well, so far so good. The kids are all right. You've got TJ Weeks winning the rookie of the week. Week one in the 8-10. Oh, how about Sean East last week? First time that's happened for the Minutemen in quite some time. Well, that just speaks to the talent of those two young men. If you think about it, Jay, particularly for Sean East, it's hard to be a freshman point guard. He's been able to do that. He's been able to contribute mightily offensively, averaging 14 points a game. And T.J. Weeks, it's not easy to come off the bench either. And that's something he's really been adept at so far in the early going. And the kids uh, certainly have been very popular here in Amherst. Yeah, and, you know, those guys 
kind of maybe overshadowing a little bit the production from Trey Mitchell. Almost 14 points a game in the first five contests. Here's Weeks from the corner. Cannot stop him. He's all right, all right. Oh, man. Six for six from long distance for T.J. Weeks. And that gives UMass a little bit of breathing room here. Not much, but they'll take it up 56-47. Ryder just doesn't have an answer for that corner three. And Baptiste says no as Weeks gives up the foul. And Frederick Scott will head to the free throw line. And we've seen, as I mentioned this earlier, we've seen Carl Pierre on this baseline runner. I mean, you can you can run it for either one interchangeably. And I think that's what makes it so difficult defensively to try and keep up. And he can also put East into that equation, too. If he gets the ball out of his hands, we've seen him flash to the corner as well. I mean, 10 for 18, you're not going to shoot lights out every night from long distance. But so far, we haven't been proven wrong in that instance for the Minutemen. At Northeastern game eight games ago, they or eight days ago, I should say, Jay, they were 13 out of 27 for three-point range. So they've been on quite a roll out top and out deep here in the early going. You know, and it makes you wonder, you go back last season in the similar tournament setting early on in the year. They played Southern Illinois out in Las Vegas and put up a record number of three-point makes. But after that, it was a little bit downhill, some fool's gold a year ago. This feels different. Pierre for three. That was contested by Allen Powell. Coach McCall wanted to foul in that contest. Marshall running the other way. And Tyre Marshall, 20 points today. Marshall hasn't been afraid to get out and run off misses and beat UMass down the floor. They've done that on several occasions here. And again, scoring a ton of points in the paint are the Bronx. The lead back to six here for the Minutemen, 12 to go. The Bronx have played UMass tight here. Weeks driving, draws the contact. And I'll give a foul on Nunez, which will be his first, and take us to our next media timeout. So Weeks to the free throw line. And he has been nearly perfect today. But otherwise, 10 for 19 from three-point range. And everybody having a hand in this one. I think for the Minutemen, you've got Weeks with 20, Marshall with 20 for Ryder. And this just has a kind of a sinking feeling if you've been accustomed to watching UMass over the past couple of the seasons where six points doesn't really feel like where this game should be, the way that they played tonight. And the way that it's unfolded, Jay, with this relatively young squad, it's uncharted territory for them this season. You know, they haven't really been in a position where they've had a big lead and then a determined opponent come back at them like this. And so this is uh, this is certainly going to be a learning experience over the next 12 minutes for the Minutemen. So Weeks hits the free throw. 21 points for him. It's a seven-point lead. Ryder, meanwhile, coming back on a cross-country flight from Arizona State. Coming up here today, kind of weary at the beginning of the season. UMass trying to get the turnover, and a whistle will bail out Frederick Scott. That's a tough he was foul. Stumbling. Coach McCall didn't like it as he goes storming down to the other end of the court. They call that push foul. It's Weeks on a loose ball. You can see Coach McCall there telling everybody what he thinks of it. Here's the replay. But clearly, here's... Scott didn't have control. That's two guys going ball, for a yeah. loose ball, Jay. I don't know that that's a foul necessarily. And I think Coach McCall just got the technical. A key moment in this game with 11.42 to go. Coach McCall wasn't happy about a non-call and a rebound a, a moment or two ago just before the timeout. And that really got him upset after this situation. Again, maybe they called Weeks with a push at the offhand on the right, but certainly uh, a tough call there. Two guys heading toward the deck to make a play. And that is the fourth foul on Weeks. Technical foul assessed. You got 17 fouls now for the Minutemen. So that'll mean bonus the rest of the way for Ryder. And they have been 9 out of 16 from the foul line tonight. That could swing the momentum here. Bronx Jordan driving into Pierre and wanted the call, but not a contact there, and that'll be 
Turned over, either a foul on Marshall. And if you'll pardon the Go expression, that's a Bronx cheer <laughs> against the Bronx here at the Mullen Center after the Minutemen fans are a little irritated over the those last uh, lack of a call and then that call. You've been waiting all week to unload that one. Here comes Samba Diallo back in the game. A technical foul on the following the loose ball foul. Minutemen have Mitchell and Weeks both in foul trouble. On the ball in Shawnee Sands here for UMass. Under 11, 30 to go. But also get some production for Claire Jo. He's been quiet. Shake and bake for Pierre. Nice move for the captain. Good decision by the Minutemen. Put the ball in the hands of the veteran player. And Carl Pierre determinedly goes to the basket to try to stem the tide right now. Lead back to eight for the Minutemen. Just over 11 to go. Marshall has been a big factor today. Hands it off to Nunez. Jordan trying to break down East. Finds Marshall in the paint. Guarded by Baptiste and altered the shot to DeGiri. A tough one for Marshall. Here comes UMass. Jerry's done a nice job against Marshall tonight. 59-51 here inside the Mullen Center. It's only the fifth game of the season. And we've had some... Big moments already this year. East in the lane. Blocks. Well defended by Vaughn. Haven't seen that a lot from East. And now Jordan the other way gets hacked by Baptiste, who does have some fouls to give. His first on the day. Free throws coming up here. Well, Carl Pierre is known for his three-point shooting prowess, but he, he realized he had his man already beat when he got to the basket, got the basketball. Decided to go right to the rack. I just have to give him so much respect on the three-point line. Gives yeah, him that. Creates the space, you know. doesn't it? Right, Stevie Jordan is five for five from the free throw line entering today. He misses here. And they'll give Marshall a well-deserved break. 26 minutes so far for the senior Marshall. It's a rare second half test for the Minute Men, Jay. They've been outscoring opponents by 53 in the final 20 minutes so far this year. Jordan hits the second one. And certainly that Central Connecticut State game helps when you blow out an opponent. Well, the Minute Men have done this much at least. They've kept Ryder at arm's length. The lead hasn't gotten out of that one possession or even that two possession situation yet. Pierre on the deck again. And one. What patience by Carl Pierre. What athleticism. And again, they put the ball in the hands of the captain. And the captain delivers. You know, speaking from the UMass perspective here, for a guy like Pierre, it feels like there's been times this season where, you know, he really hasn't done a lot. And then you all of a sudden look up at the scoreboard, and he's got 18 points. So far today, he's got 15. Well, and the has led his team. I'm sorry, Jay. The Minutemen just haven't been as deep as they have been. You know, Carl Pierre's first two years, he's been asked to carry just so much of the load. And now he's got some help, so he hasn't had to, you know, crank up 10 or 11 three-pointers in the game. He's been able to pick and choose his spots. And then situations like this where they have to guard guys like East, uh, East and Weeks at the three-point line, that opens up some alleys for Carl Pierre. Yeah, I think you said it accurately there last season. If Pierre didn't have 24 points and go 5 for 7 from the three-point line, he didn't have a shot. That's totally... Different this season. Stolen away. Claire Joe getting involved on the takeaway. A 10-point lead for the Minutemen. East to Pierre. He'll try a three. Indeed. Seven-point personal run for the junior from Boston. Carl Pierre, who was here. You know, when times get tough, that you know, you know you can turn to them. Yeah, without a doubt. You can see the energy on the bench there. Uh, head coach Matt McCall to Baji Walker, who's still awaiting word on uh, whether he'll be able to play in a game this season, transfer from Cleveland State. Some feel that he's just as talented and perhaps more so than many in the Atlantic 10 if he gets a shot to play this season. But the energy from that bench, no matter you know who's in the game, they've been able to support their teammates and uh, grow this lead 65-52. So Ryder trying to slow things down here on the 9-2 run for the Minutemen. And this is where they're going to end up. Marshall, baseline. 
And he traveled, trying to slip by Baptiste. And I think this is where you're starting to see the wear and tear of a beleaguered team that has had significant travel and is shorthanded in Ryder. And certainly putting Jerry Baptiste out there at 6'11 has made Marshall's life a lot tougher here in the second half. He's done a nice job denying him the ball, making it difficult, and that time he forced him into the travel. East finds Diallo, and he'll head to the free throw line. Marshall will accrue the foul. That'll be his third. But have been great perseverance here. They took a heck of a shot from Ryder, but they've been able to fight back here. And a good take there by Samba Diallo. That's something he's done well tonight is get himself to the foul line. You know, going strong to the basket, but Samba just two for seven once he does get to the foul line. Yeah, and as we mentioned, he was six for seven from the foul line on Saturday. Now he's on course here. I think you really have to give credit to this Ryder University team. Guys coming up from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. You know, hanging here after taking some haymakers from T.J. Weeks. They were able to stay in this game. And now UMass starting to pull away a little bit here as Diallo hits both free throws. And they got blasted by Arizona State, 92-55, but we're up in that game in the first five minutes, 12-4. Floater for Jordan. No luck there on the putback. Third time's a charm, not this time around. Blocked by Baptiste, Claire Joe, and the open court to East. East to the rack. And it all started with that block by Jerry Baptiste. He's been out there a long time, Jay, and he has made a big difference as UMass has gotten this lead back to 17. Matching the largest lead of the day for the Minutemen. 13 to two run. And a foul on Baptiste as Marshall was trying to back him down. Now, too many chances here you would say for Ryder. That's the bad news. Here's the good news, you come away with it. They've actually, Jay, as we see, he's going to the basket. They call the double foul here, I believe. So that'll be the fourth. Diallo on Marshall. Gets, Mar Marshall gets the foul for Ryder. Diallo, the foul for UMass. And officials will do this when they start to see rough play breaking out without having to break out a flagrant or a technical. It's a way of saying, hey guys, knock it off. And an effective one at that is Miniman continue to challenge defensively here. That's a that's a good call by the officials to try to send a message here to uh, to the players that we're not going to let anything really a rough break out here tonight. I can see the Minutemen frustrated with Marshall. Marshall now getting frustrated with Diallo and Baptiste. Jordan will try a three to slow things down. Bricked it. Marshall right there on the putback. Sometimes you just get lucky. 22 points for Marshall. Three shy of his career high. Fawn has the fourth foul, I should say, for Ryder, not Marshall. He's got three. Okay. So four for Vaughn, four for Frederick Scott for Ryder, under eight to go. Pierre takes it to the lane, and it's no good. Rebound for Marshall. Had ten double-doubles in his career entering today. Got 15 rebounds, but they'll give it back. So it was 7.38 to go. UMass up 69 from different players leading the way and now today's a similar story well i think it certainly speaks to the depth the minutemen have been able to acquire coming into the season you see the graphic there and tonight carl pierre there with 21 points and tj weeks also 21 points weeks of course in foul trouble with four but you know again the minutemen have many more weapons than they've had the last few years and you know that makes it difficult on opposing defenses and it gives you mass options when guys like trey mitchell get in foul trouble you don't have to just rely on one man you can spread the wealth and that certainly makes you mass a dangerous team yeah absolutely and you know one number that we haven't really talked a ton about is turnovers for the minutemen only nine 16 for Ryder, which is below their average of 22 per game mitchell back out there with the four fouls Little jumper for Pierre along the baseline. Here comes Jordan. Trying to will his team back into this one. And we've got a hold down low as Demencio Vaughn missed the jumper. They're going to give it on Samba. Diallo is second. Oh, Mitchell back, Mitchell back out there, though, but you can't understate the job Jerry Baptiste did out, especially in the defensive end. He really neutralized Marshall. Had to play an extended period with his teammate Mitchell picking up the, the fourth foul early on here. And 
you know, Baptiste has four points. That doesn't jump out at you on the box score, but the 17 minutes and what he was able to do defensively really should here tonight. Yeah, I would agree. And I think also what might be understated is the impact that Mitchell had offensively early on where really nothing was falling, and he got all nine points in the first few minutes. He certainly was a catalyst there and kind of jump-started the Minutemen after they didn't really get any, have anything going offensively there around the 18-minute mark of the first half. Well said. Here's Weeks to Pierre. Pierre and the two-hand flush. It was like the seas parted in the paint there, Jay, as Pierre swung off the screen and went right down University Drive. 23 points for the captain, Pierre. And we've got a whistle here. I think this might be a warning. Are they going to say Pierre hung on the rim, do you think? Well, we'll take a look at the replay here, and he rolled right around. Vaughn and drove straight to the basket. I wonder if it may be a situation with the clock, Jay. Uh, Pierre was surprised to see that. You're right, the C's parting there. Said, hey, I get a chance to throw one down in traffic. He has 23 points tonight. His career high is 26. He had that uh, last February against George Mason. Now, what a find for UMass. Carl Pierre out of BC High, a late commit to the Minutemen, and he certainly is... Uh, Fit the bill very nicely in this UMass program the last three years, weathering a couple of tough years. And this has to feel like such a payoff to him, you know, having more depth, having a bit more talent around him here in his junior season. Speaking of commits, we had that piece at halftime with head coach Matt McCall talking about the two commits that have signed with the Minutemen. Take another look at this one here from Pierre. You got to respect the three. They're reviewing, you were right, Jay, whether or not he hung yeah, on the rim and whether that warrants that. a technical. And I, from my perspective, that should not be a technical, but because his momentum brought him up, but it can be a technical if a player does do that chin up or they're actually going to, looks like they're going to call it, Jay. It's a tough call. We saw this called against Northeastern, Northeastern right? Yeah. Eight days ago. You know, that's, it well, looked like Carl was showboating to me, but certainly it seemed to be a point of emphasis for the officials this year. Well, you feel like the Minutemen have a pretty comfortable lead here, obviously. Ryder not out, but UMass, despite themselves here tonight, they haven't rebounded all that well. They've got a technical on the coach. They've got a Class B technical here. And Ryder cannot take advantage, so Vaughn will inbound. A second, we didn't see one of those called at all last year. I don't recall one. No. Scott on Diallo muscles his way to the rim and can't finish. Marshall there to battle for the offensive board and it's out of bounds. Well, certainly a more physical approach on the glass by the Minutemen here in the second half, just as Coach McCall was looking for. The Minutemen badly out rebounded, particularly on the offensive boards in the first half. It's still 14 to 8 in the second half, but Ryder only has four offensive rebounds, so that's certainly an improvement. Put 20 on the shot clock. Nunez in the lane is good. Willie Nunez up to six points today for Ryder. Six to go here. Mitchell trying to get some revenge on Marshall. Double move, and he'll head to the free throw line. Good strong move there by Mitchell to get Marshall up into the air. Trying to back his way in here at the post and then a little up and under move and able to draw just enough contact for the foul. You know, I'll say this about Mitchell and he's had such a solid start to his collegiate career. 13 points a game, six and a half rebounds per game, was in foul trouble today and on Saturday. And despite that, I think he's frustrated with himself because he hasn't been able to get those to go down. He hasn't been able to get the free throws. And you just look at the way he plays in his shot. Time will heal those issues for Mitchell, or so you would think. And here he hits the second one. And he's still averaging 13 points yeah, a game this season. He's with the Minutemen twice in scoring. But you can certainly tell just by watching him, he has a very high bar for himself. You feel like there's just another gear that he could shift it into here very soon. 16-point lead for the Minutemen, under 5.40 to go. Defense, 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 
Nunez left open and head back to the free throw line as Pierre gets called for his first foul. You know, we talked about Ryder in the MAC, and that was the team that was picked to finish at the top of their conference, predicted to finish second. And we saw UMass Lowell, they were predicted to finish at the top of their conference, Northeastern as well. So UMass hasn't played that real big time mid major opponent or power opponent as they're going to see this weekend, but they've. They've been able to put together a pretty decent schedule of quality opponents so far. Certainly enough to give this young team a test. They faced, you know, Northeastern, a tournament team last year, and a veteran club. This is a veteran club, UMass Lowell, a veteran club. So, you know, while maybe it, it, it's lacked the star power in terms of a name, it's certainly been the useful for this UMass team as Diallo gets fouled. He's showing off that strong arm downfield. And back to the line for Samba Diallo. And I think one of the biggest challenges this week for the Minutemen fans as well is you cannot look past Ryder because you've got that glaring game on your schedule Saturday at noon down to Mohegan Sun against the reigning champion Virginia Cavaliers. And credit the Minutemen. They got out to a fast start in this game. They yep. were engaged and it wasn't as if that effort weighed. It was Writers there to take it to them early in the second half, but UMass to this point at least has had an answer And Samba Diallo continues his struggles at the foul line been terrible from the free throw line today And Riders gonna need to shoot themselves back into this one from long distance I go right back to Marshall. Here's pa Powell for three Already had three of those made today not there and Pierre with a rebound in OJ with 32 points in the paint and a 14 point deficit late as East goes to the hole and is fouled. It's going to be very difficult for Ryder to come back. Only a 30% three point shooting team. So, you know, that's certainly not their thing as we take a look at this replay. As East found the split, the two defenders again, the Minutemen taking it hard to the hole and able to get themselves back at the foul line. But UMass. Not good tonight. 7 out of 17 from the charity strike. Yeah, absolutely. Something they need to improve upon. Sean East, 6 points today, make it 7. This goes back to that graphic we showed earlier with, you know, different players leading the way. East was the leading scorer for the Minutemen, entering today over 14 points a game. And I guess you could say he's been quiet. Obviously, he facilitates the offense. Well, he's had other guys like Pierre and like... Uh, weeks coming off the bench too that have helped him. You know, he's done a great job running this offense, and you know certainly he's not going to be counted on the score like he has been every night when he's also got to run the point. Marshall trying to get Mitchell out of the game goes right at him and fills it up yet again. He's got 24. I'll tell you what, Jay, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the back. You know, he's going to be very a tough customer. He's hard to guard. He's got great moves around the basket, soft hands and. He's got to be one of the best post players the back has to offer. Yep. And there's a guy that came out of Philadelphia, one-year post-grad at Putnam Science Academy. There's Diallo, hard jump step in the lane and the finger roll. Great use of the jump stop there against an aggressive defense, and we have a whistle after the made basket. They call it a technical foul, I think, against Samba Diallo. Matt McCall doesn't understand what that was. Jerry Heater at the technical. The official is, we take a look, here's Diallo, goes hard to the basket, great move there, he scores, and he put his hand up looking for the foul and got the unsporting technical ball. Carl Pierre and Sean East hug. that's three technicals against the Yeah, that's, that's not pretty. You know, I wonder if he was trying to show that he was bumped after he yeah. was trying to get back either during the play or trying to get back on defense. Or maybe something was said. And well, uh, they're trying to clean up the trash talk. Certainly was that gesture like he was putting his hand up toward the official, like, hey, I I got hit going to the basket. As Nunez, Nunez misses that one. Here's another look. Well, sorry, Great the move. basket career. Wonderful move. And right here, put his hand up and oh, you yeah, can see that in gesture. His face, yep. And that's gonna draw a technical from an official more times than not. Mitchell heads to the bench. So Ryder's been given some opportunities to close the gap here. Three technical fouls called on the Minutemen. All different varying versions of the technical. 
And Marshall has it wiped away. It'll stay Ryder basketball. And that'll bring us to our final stanza. 3.55 to go. UMass up comfortably. But 3.55 to go. You can see Ryder as they continue the Air Force Reserve tip-off tournament. And the other bracket will take on Columbia. Then the winner of Vermont and Central Connecticut State. And they still have games on the road against Temple and Wisconsin later in December as well. So a uh, really good test for that Bronx squad. Spending New Year's Eve in Madison, Wisconsin against the Badgers. Ooh. And how good is that Vermont team? Two, by the way. we got UMass coming up. They'll have to take on Virginia. East with the steal. Claire Joe on the run out. And could pretty much do it here for the Minutemen. Claire Joe will head to the line. His first bucket today. Minutemen forced their 13th, or forced the 13th turnover against Ryder there. And as the Minutemen do so well, they get that run out after the turnover happens. And Claire Joe stays through the contact, gets the layup to go. And that should send everybody here at the Mullen Center out to uh, the parking lot's pretty happy tonight, I think. 5-0 and oh has a nice ring to it if you're a UMass fan. Uh, it sure does. You know, I remember last year, Diallo with the offensive board. So free throw's an issue for the Minutemen. I think everybody was talking about what a good start UMass could have gotten off to last season, and they fell to some of the teams that you would certainly think they should win against. And it's not been the case this season, but they have the toughest tests ahead. Pierre takes a deep three. Oh. You've got, not to mention the Power Fives this weekend, but Rutgers, as you and I talked about, day after Thanksgiving. South Carolina, which... Looks like a winnable game now after Boston University took down the Gamecocks last night. That's a return game from a couple of years ago. How about the two-hand finish for Vaughn? You know, but it's time for the, the, the to get that test against the, the power conference yeah. teams. Get a shot against the defending national champion. Get a shot against a really good Arizona State team that, you know, really is suffocating defensively. Or St. John's, you know, having to go on the road to Rutgers. And don't overlook that Harvard team either. They've struggled with some injuries, but certainly that's going to be a big game at Levini's Pavilion uh, to start off December. Five on the shot clock for East. Pierre thinking about three, number five, and another shot clock violation here for the Minutemen. Well, the you Minutemen know, didn't score there, Jay, but they did manage to run 30 seconds off the clock here with Ryder trailing by 15. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to mention sort of where the A-10 is this season compared to the last year. A lot of good wins for the Atlantic 10. UMass has an opportunity to get some of those wins as well for the conference. The conference is undefeated against the SEC. We talked to Bernadette McGlade on Saturday, the a Tech commissioner as that pass goes out of bounds and Matt McCall a little unhappy to say the least But she was beaming with pride with all these great wins that the, the conference has had in the early going There was a Richmond win over Vanderbilt VCU beat LSU at the Siegel Center. That was a great win and, You know the Rhode minute, Island took down Rhode Connecticut Island, uh, Rhode Island uh, took down Alabama Something was, at St. Joe's St. Joe took yeah. down Connecticut last week So some great signature wins early for the A-10 and those wins mean you know Maybe the A-10 could be a three or four Four big league as opposed to a one or two big one. Still a long ways to go, and Weeks draws his fifth foul. Picks up his fifth foul, I should say. Coach McCall is rather frustrated with the officiating right now, but he does have a 15-point lead in his pocket as we take another look. It looked like Weeks had pretty good guarding position there. And took the hip check from Jordan, but the call went the other way. Weeks heads to the bench. A good day at the office for him. 21 points in 21 minutes, 7 out of 8 shooting, and 6 for 6 from 3-point range. It's just a shot of offense for weeks off the bench. I mean, that's when this game really started to turn around. Quickly grew the lead into double figures. 6 for 6. Not a wasted shot from 3-point range for weeks today. He fouls out. And every one of those that he took, obviously he made 7, but great decision-making by the freshman. When to take those 3, when to take it to the 3s, when to take it to the basket, and uh, certainly what a weapon to have. He reminds you of Vinny the Microwave Johnson. The <laughs> old Detroit Pistons team coming off the bench with a spark. East of, the, east of the lane as it's swatted by Marshall. A 2.05 to go here. You know, again, Ryder, we keep talking about this. Though this thing's out of hand. I mean, the Minutemen have been clamped down on by the Bronx. Marshall's played a phenomenal game, the big man. Tell you what, though, Kevin Baggett has done a great job with this Ryder program in his eighth year as the head coach. 
you know, they finished above 500 five of the first seven years he's been there as Pierre hoists that three, but you know, they're always near the top of the MAC. They won the league in the regular season two years ago. Had to go to Oregon for a NIT game. As big hit there against uh, Claire Joe, absorbing some contact. But they are certainly always one of the top teams in the MAC. I'll tell you a little bit about Keon Claire Joe at this point in the game. 143 left, trying to take the charge, and he took a shot there. Yeah, he couldn't quite get there in time. And Got beat to the spot. But that's Keon Claire Joe in a nutshell, certainly. He'll yeah. do every, anything he can to draw charges, get rebounds, defend. You know, he doesn't always score. Of course, he had that big game against against Central Connecticut, I should say. But he does so much for this team. And just a, you talk about a shot of energy. He's another one. One of the transfers brought in by Matt McCall. He's known Claire Joe for quite some time. Met, came over from Memphis. And a man up by 13. Look at 12 as Riders still lurking around. 143 to go. And they'll bring back in Christian Ings to give Jordan a rest here in the final 143. Well, we're talking about the Minutemen missing foul shots. You know, the 9 of 20 from the foul line. And another Ryder basket or two. That could become a huge factor here. The Minutemen needing to hit those. Yeah, the Minutemen haven't scored in over two minutes. And lead whittled down to 12. Down to Mitchell. Mitchell fights it up. Marshall with another rebound. He's got 19 rebounds to go along with his 24 points today. A monster game for Marshall. Scott will try a three. No luck for Scott, but it'll stay Bronx ball. This could easily be a one-possession game. A Ryder been able to hit some of their long-distance shots, but they have struggled from beyond the arc. Four for 16. And now Les Jones, the official, over talking to the replay operator. You look at Marshall, 10 for 16 from the floor. And has pretty much single-handedly done the damage for the Bronx tonight. See the mass there. Coming up, T.J. Weeks early on, 6 for 6 from 3. So much confidence for Weeks. Now, Ryder will inbound here from underneath their own basket with 1.12 to go. Marshall. New career high for Marshall. 26 and a timeout called. It's a 10 point game. 106 to go. Very tight lipped about what the issue is with Cy Chapman. It is a personal family issue, as they've said, so he has not uh, been able to play through the first five games, but. You know, I think there's optimism, and I'm just speaking from the cuff here, that he will return at some point, and if slash when he does, that just adds a whole other element to what this team can do. Certainly, it gives UMass more depth down low. That's something they need. You know, rebounding has been a problem for UMass this season. They're minus 10 in that department here tonight, Jay. They need to get that, that body in Chapman, you know. I imagine he's going to be a lot better, too, from with another year of experience, another year in the weight room, and certainly will complement uh, Mitchell and Baptiste down there. Almost three minutes without a bucket here for the Minutemen. And now we'll get a foul. I got a stat, for, Junior. Go a for, stat it. for you, Jay. The last time a UMass opponent had 20 or more rebounds, you're going to go back to 1994. Yinka Dare with <laughs> oh. George Washington had 20 rebounds of that 1994 game. That's some good company to be in. That's a great company if you're Marshall for Ryder. He's sitting at 19 right now, so he's got a chance to, to tie that mark. Yeah, the halcyon days of GW. So Mike in, Jarvis, the yeah. Massachusetts native, was coaching him. There were some knockdown drag him outs against the Colonials back then. And they're rebuilding this year. And Clairjo hits the first one. I'm glad we got a Yika Dare reference in on the broadcast. Now we can call the call it a day. Well, there's still not 59. quite 59.1 59. seconds 1 left. Time. We got to stick around. Not quite ready to put this one. No, in. Good certainly. Call if you're a UMass fan. I think Ryder. You know, if you really got to give him credit, the tenacity that they've shown. They haven't, although the, the turnovers have been. There, it hasn't been glaring like it was on Sunday against Arizona State. The thing that served them is with the three-point line, they're only four for 16 yeah. from there, and that's really uh, 
taking a hit at their field goal percentage, which is less than 40%. That's a huge difference in this game. Ings on the drive. Marshall another rebound. And Marshall on the putback gets fouled. Could be the end for Mitchell. Oh, nope, they're going to give it on Sambo, which will be his third. Oh, fourth, excuse me, for Diallo. Well, Tyre Marshall ambles to the foul line. This is maybe the one weakness in his game. He's a 45% foul shooter, but absolutely drains that one. He's 11 out of 17 shooting, Jay, and we continue to sing his praises. He was an 80% shooter coming into this game. That tells you where all of his shots are coming from. And put up 20 against Coppin State, the first game of the season for Ryder. Trying to make it a 10-point contest here. And he does. Miniman averaging only 60 points allowed per game. Ryder gets to the 70 mark, and East will draw the foul on Ings. Oh, good test here for Sean East, having to make some foul shots coming down the stretch. Sean East with 6 out of 10 coming into the game from the foul line tonight, and or coming into the game for the season tonight. He's 2 for 2. Well, Sean, 3 out of 10 shooting tonight, so maybe not the night he would have hoped for offensively, but the 8 rebounds absolutely huge as that facilitator, as you mentioned. Well, it wasn't a perfect night here inside the Mullins for the Minutemen. The technicals will certainly stand out, the rebounding deficiency, but the three-point shooting, really the story, 11 for 22. And East putting in two crucial free throws here. He's got 10, and the lead is 12 for the Minutemen. Well, you don't want perfect nights in November. You want them in February yeah. and March coming down the stretch. And yeah. Assuming the Minutemen do put this thing away, and it looks like they're going to. This is another building block for them to grow from. Powell pulls the trigger. Doesn't get it to go, and another offensive board. How about Vaughn with the spin? He's got seven. 25 seconds to go. Ten-point game. Nowhere to go for Pierre, and he had to call timeout. Time out. There's a five-second call coming his way if he had move it, and Good, good decision there to call the timeout with 17.7 seconds left. We'll stop. <laughs> Hard work today for Mitchell. The fouls early set him off course a little bit. At the minimum, Jay, rebounding and interior defense will be the next two things to work on as they run this out. And the fans here at the Mullen Center come to their feet. A salute this team that's 5-0 and oh for the first time since the 13-14 season. Sean East going around and giving everybody congratulations as Joe dribbles it out. And the fans rising to their feet here inside the Mullen Center. UMass hangs on for a 10-point victory over Ryder, 82-72. How about